Hello, I'm Ron Soyland. This is part two of the making of Fleming diode valve. Um, this time we will start uh, with making electrodes and continue. Okay, to make electrodes we're going to use um, nickel wire for holding the electrodes. Uh, this is um, uh, I think number 22 nickel wire. It's, it's 0.025. I'm going to make them pieces about, um, oh, maybe an inch and a half long. I'm going to make two for holding the plate and two for the filament. Now, when we're going to seal these in the glass, these are round pieces of wire. So the glass doesn't really stick to the wire. Um, therefore, if we have it just pinched into the glass, the electrode would be able to turn. To stop that, we're going to take the pliers and we're going to use the back end of these pliers and we're just going to crimp the bottom end of the wire and put a little flat on it. And that makes it to where when the glass seals on it, that, that wire won't be able to turn. Also, that flat creates an area to where it can't be pulled out of the out either. Sometimes the, the, the glass won't stick tight enough and you can just pull those wires out and that, that's not very handy. So by putting this little flat area on the end, that keeps it from pulling out and it keeps it from rotating. It's just a little flattened area. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the tungsten wire that's used for the seals. Now I'm going to set the welder to the proper current. I've done that uh, so many times I know where to set the setting and we take tungsten wire. This is 16 mil tungsten wire. Um, you get it uh, from a welding shop or you get it on eBay. It's about a dollar a foot, which seems a little expensive, but a foot of it will make you know, dozens of seals. They're, the seals are only quarter inch long, so um, you, know, you can make a lot of seals out of a foot of wire. So it's really not per, expensive per seal. We just put it on there. and it's welded. Now we're just going to break that off to about a quarter inch long. The wire is very brittle so it breaks off quite easily. This one delaminated so I got to break a considerable piece of that off. Uh, tungsten wire is treacherous and it, it can have laminations. If that would have been in our seal, that lamination was an area where the tungsten was not um, uh, sealed together, so there was an actual crack in the tungsten wire. Now, if we'd have had that in our seal, air could have gone into that crack, gone through the seal, and then gotten into the tube. Would have been a disaster. So I'm just going to break that piece off of there. Okay, and we'll make the third one for the, let's see, for the plate, we're going to use thinner wire. This is O2O, that's for the filaments. Now for the plate, we're going to use some, some 10 mil wire so that we have a little bit of flexibility. I'm just going to cut a little piece about an uh, inch and a half long here. This is the piece that will go out through the side of the envelope. <clears throat> Flatten it a little bit. We're going to use copper wire for our lead wires. We can't use the tungsten. If we just let the tungsten stick out and try to fasten onto it, it's extremely brittle and um, uh, we'd break it off. I used to use just the tungsten sticking out, but I had so many of them breaking off that I had to come up with something else. So I weld a piece of copper wire onto the other end, and that's what we actually use to connect the wires in the tube. The, tube, the wires that come out the bottom here are uh, copper. Um, it used to be, I used to just let the tungsten come out and connect onto it, but it was so brittle that you know just manipulating it around to get it to the tube pins would just pop them off of there and ruin the tube. We're just going to use pieces of um, number 26 copper wire. I've stretched it to make it straight. Now copper will not weld onto tungsten. We have to use a brazing material. 
And what we use is nickel sleeving. We take nickel sleeving, which is the diameter of the wire, and we shove it over the wire. It's about a one-to-one -one fit. There we go. And I'm just going to put about a sixteenth of an inch of it on there. I'll use the diamond saw to cut it off smoothly. Do another one. Okay. This sleeving is made by taking the cathodes out of vacuum tubes. You get some receiving tubes that have very small diameter sleeving. You can find some that have the diameter of the wire that you're using. Um, you have to just, whatever wire you're using, you just find a, a tube that has the right diameter and just use cathode material. It's made out of nickel. And um, you just clean the, um, the emission stuff off of it and it leaves just pure copper sleeve, uh, uh, nickel sleeving. Nickel is a universal welding metal. It will stick to any, any other metal. You, know, you can stick it to copper, you can stick it to tungsten, uh, molybdenum, um, uh, any other kind of uh, metal there is, it'll stick to. Now to keep the sleeves from popping off the end of the wire, we're just going to crimp them on there. Just flatten them just a little bit and that holds them and keeps them from sliding off of there while we're working with them. Then we're going to trim them to make them exactly a sixteenth inch or so. We just need a little bit because we're just going to make the weld right on the end. Now some people use butt welds. Um, if you're using uh, like um, Kovar, you can go ahead and make a butt weld between copper and Kovar. However, you cannot make a butt weld between copper and tungsten. There, there's a, a brittleness that forms at the, at the point of weld and it'll break off every time. It, it just will strong. So we need to make a lap weld with a uh, brazing material in order to have it strong. Now for this we use full power on the welding machine. It's full 90 amps because we want to take that nickel and heat it to where it's literally uh, molten nickel and that will just go ahead and um, form the bond between the copper and the tungsten. And that's all it takes. Use the scruncher to go ahead and um, even it out. You don't want any little strands of metal sticking out to where it would punch through the glass and make a leak. Okay, now this is going to be the one that's for the through the um, through the side of the glass. We've made this one very short. Now we'll do the filament ones, which go through the pinch in the bottom. see what that looks like. It's just we have the nickel wire, the tungsten in the middle, and then the copper. It's welded together in each one. And those are very strong welds that don't let loose. I have had them let loose before, but if they're made right, they won't. I'm just using the scruncher here to make the joint, the weld joint, round so that it'll uh, embed itself in the glass better. If it has any little pieces that stick out at an angle, sometimes it'll punch through the glass and form a leak. And that uh, is, is pure disaster. The, it'll ruin the tube. Okay. That gives us our three electrodes. Now to hold the electrodes, we use aluminum tape. This is just duct tape, aluminum duct tape. I'm just going to cut a little strip of it here. <coughs> I 
Okay, we're going to start off with the plate support. The filament wire. Second filament wire. And the last plate support. And I'll just bend that over. Okay, and see that makes just a nice little thing that holds our wires and keeps them from wiggling around. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the pinch. We're going to take the uh, take the the uh, wires. We'll put them up inside. Heat it, pinch it down on there, and make the seal. 